so today we're going to build a 10 megahertz uh, Pi network it's a three pole low pass filter for 10 megahertz and uh, this is a circuit that is intended to uh, change the square wave output from a GPS controlled um, uh, 10 megahertz frequency reference that is a square wave and change it to a sine wave for my flex 1500 the low pass filter can work this way because as you can see from this diagram the square wave is actually made of a combination of a uh, fundamental uh, frequency sine wave plus the third harmonic the fifth harmonic and all other odd harmonics what we need to do is to filter out the components that are higher than fundamental frequency and that can be done with a uh, low pass filter. Now I designed the low pass filter with a shareware program called RF Sim 99 uh, which has a very convenient uh, tool for designing uh, filters. Brings up a new window here and we did find uh, that uh, choosing a cutoff frequency, a 3 dB cutoff frequency of 11.37 megahertz. Uh, it uh, actually designed uh, a, a Pi Network low pass filter with uh, uh, capacitor uh, values that I had on hand and this again is designed for a 50 ohm impedance at the uh, input and output. Now if we push on this button here we will now bring up a new uh, window with actually a uh, um, filter response uh, predicted for this filter and we'll go ahead and do that now. So here is the uh, calculated uh, filter response for this uh, low pass filter. And uh, this graph here starts uh, from 0 uh, megahertz up to 50 megahertz on the horizontal scale. And uh, this red line uh, represents the um, uh, attenuation starting from 0 dB down here up to minus 60 dB. And uh, by moving this um, little cursor along here, we can actually see what the calculated values are at every point here at uh, five, uh, I'm sorry, 10 megahertz. It's calculating a loss of minus 1.65 decibels. Now, if we go up to the first odd harmonic, which will be 30 megahertz, um, which is right here, the uh, calculated um, attenuation will be minus 25.29 dB, which is very respectable. And of course, as we go higher, uh, up to um, 50 megahertz, you see it, uh, it increases to uh, minus 38.29. 5.9 dB. So it looks like a, a good um, response that we would expect with this filter. And uh, this is what so this is build. what it's going to look like. And these are the parts that we start out, start out with. First of all, we use an Altoids tin as a container. Uh, we have a uh, T50-2 toroid core, uh, which uh, you can get at Fry's Electronics. Um, and uh, also we have a couple of BNC um, single hole female um, receptacles. Uh, we're going to use a couple of 280 picofarad um, ceramic discs. I just happen to have these in my junk box, but 270 picofarad, which is a standard uh, value, should work just fine. And uh, we also have about 18 inches of magnet wire. It's a standard copper enameled wire. I just happen to have a spool of uh, 20 gauge um, magnet wire on hand, and that's what I'm going to use. So the first thing I do is I take the Altoids um, can and I mark a pilot hole where we're going to be mounting the BNC connectors, and uh, roughly about the center of this space from the cover down to the bottom lip, and maybe about uh, three quarters of an inch in from the hinge end. And I do that on both sides, these pilot holes and are used to guide the drill that we're going to drill uh, the holes for the BNC connectors. So we're going to use a Dremel tool. those larger. Now these holes have to be enlarged uh, to um, accommodate this BNC connector. Uh, the um, 
the size of the hole has to be a little larger than this quarter inch drill bit. Uh, but this metal is so thin that uh, these large drill bits tend to uh, tear up the metal too much. So what I'm going to do is enlarge the hole with a um, little rotary um, file that I uh, file bit that I have for my drill. And uh, we can just gradually enlarge that and then deburr it uh, to accommodate the BNC connectors. There you go, it's in. So now I have uh, both of the holes drilled that will accommodate the um, BNC connectors and I need to remove the burrs and I'll do that with this uh, deburring tool or whatever you have at hand, both inside and outside. Okay, so I've spent a few minutes and I've uh, completely deburred these holes and uh, actually I have one of the BNC connectors um, installed already. And if you center it exactly right, you should be able to close the lid just fine. It'll, it'll just fit very snugly and install this uh, BNC connector. I put the tooth lock washer on first and that'll help to keep uh, the receptacle from uh, spinning. Uh, when you're uh, connecting your male connector onto the uh, onto the jack, and uh, on the inside, I'll put the solder lug. And the nut, and uh, we'll just hand tighten to begin with. I like to have the uh, uh, open part of the center pin. Uh, facing up so it's easier to solder into and uh, now that that's hand tight I'll go ahead and I'll use a half inch open end wrench to uh, further tighten this as much as possible so uh, now we're ready to do the easy part of the construction okay now that the uh, BNC connectors are mounted in the box the next thing to do is to wind the coil uh, the uh, design calls for a 1.4 microhenry um, uh, inductor, and uh, since we're using a T50-2, uh, this material will require 17 turns of wire through this toroid core uh, to give you 1.4 microhenries. Um, if you have a different size core um, or a different uh, mix material other than the two, uh, number two mix, the number of turns you will need are different. So um, I have about 18 inches of wire. Actually, it'll come into a little bit less than this uh, to wind that coil. And the way I normally do it is I'll go ahead and I'll just thread the core onto the wire and just pretty much go towards the center of the wire here. There we go. So I have looped through the center of the length of about 18 inches and that counts as one turn and uh, then I'll wind eight turns uh, one side going eight turns and the other end of the wire eight turns in the other direction so actually it'll give us a total of 17 turns uh, and what counts as a number of turns is the uh, number of times the wire passes through the center of the core so I'll just show you how we do one turn here just thread it through and then what I do is um, I'll take some pliers and uh, I'll pull on the loose end here really tight and what that does is it makes the turn nice and snug up against the core and I'll do that for every turn that we do and uh, I'll come back uh, after we've done the full 17 turns okay now I've wound uh, the uh, wire 17 times through the center of the core. And what I want to do now is uh, spread out the turns so they're pretty much even and they um, 
uh, go from about, if you imagine this was a clock from about 7 o'clock to about 5 o'clock so that the turns are not all bunched together and they should be pretty evenly spaced. And uh, the, pers the purpose of that is to uh, minimize the amount of parasitic capacitance uh, in the coil itself uh, which can uh, adversely affect the uh, functioning of the filter. And there you go, and it looks like it's pretty evenly spaced now. There, and that's our inductor. 1.4 microhenries. Okay, now we want to install the um, toroid inductor between the uh, connecting the two center pins here of the BNC connectors, and you see we have a little bit of excess wire, so we're going to trim this just to um, just about the exact length that we need. And um, we, just, we take a little diagonal cutter here and just do a snip there. And you can see that one goes right in that end. And so the other one would be right around there. There, fits nice and snug between those. Perfect thing. Uh, of course, to solder uh, the ends of the wires, now we need to remove some of the enamel. And uh, for that, I generally use a uh, emery board and just file off enough of the enamel so you can see some shiny copper there all around and we'll be soldering to that. That'll be our next step. Okay, now the ends of the um, wires have been stripped of their uh, enamel and I'm going to go ahead and just tin a little bit of 60-40 uh, rosin core solder. Here. Both ends. Here. Ready to be installed. Nice shiny connections. Next to install are the two capacitors and those go from the center pin of each BNC to the ground lug. And then we just tin the ends of these leads. Then we form the leads. Um, so that they'll fit right between those two points. Here's one. and the other one the same way.
and we're pretty much done. Just reheat any of the connections that look like they may have, uh, they may not be shiny. So make sure you have good solder joints there, and uh, we're done. There you go. Total time should take no longer than about half, well, 15 minutes if you're pretty nimble with this stuff, but uh, it's a very simple project that even a beginner can put together, and here you have a uh, low-pass filter for 10 megahertz.